Tonight, I'm going to be talking about a book I wrote several years ago called Accessing the Windows of Heaven. The reason accessing the windows of heaven is important is because I am about to launch the next wave of books that go in companionship with Accessing the Windows of Heaven. Accessing the Windows of Heaven's subtitle is called How to Reap the Benefits of Tithing. This is a lesson that God walked me through a number of years ago. And so as I introduce components of this particular book in preparation for the next wave, which will be called Wicked Wealth, the Wealth Transfer Series, I hope you'll stay with us. We've got a lot of ground to cover, but I felt like it was really important that we started with the book that started it all. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with me, my name is Stella Payton. I wrote a book, this book, Accessing the Windows of Heaven, really based on a lesson that God walked me through more than 20 years ago. And uh, if, you have, if you're not familiar with my testimony, you can find that testimony. It's about half an hour long on YouTube. So look on our YouTube channel where it says Stella Payton, Better Life with Stella. So let's dive right in. Uh, but we'll begin with the word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your word is alive. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is the one thing that can draw a line between the soul of man and the spirit of man, that eternal part and that temporal part. So as we look at your word today, we ask you for wisdom, for insight, for clarity, and more importantly, Father, we ask you for a revelation that we can apply to our lives and that that revelation will change us forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Accessing the Windows of Heaven was, uh, again, a book that was born out of a number of years of lessons that God walked me through. When my son was little more than about uh, two years old, we had gone through a series of back-to-back-to-back hardships. And those hardships sort of culminated in a time where we were basically evicted. I had lost my house, someone had stolen my car. And again, that's all a part of the testimony, you can catch that. But the revelation that God walked me through as I was going through this experience was a revelation about how tithing is supposed to connect us with the mind of God. It's not just about your money. God doesn't need your money. He owns everything anyway. But what he is endeavoring to do is to find a way to connect your heart with your mind and your income so that he can have access to you. We start our study in the book of Genesis around chapter 28. And when you look at Genesis, the 28th chapter, you find the story of Jacob at the rock of Bethel. In this particular story, Jacob is a vagabond. Essentially, he is running from his brother who has is, who's basically threatened to kill him. And Jacob has decided, based upon his mother's urgings, to leave and to go and live with her brother Laban. Now, Jacob's name, which is trickster, conniver, deceiver, all of these were actually descriptive words that reflected his character. Because up until that point, Jacob had stolen his brother's birthright. He had stolen the blessing. And each time, he was basically a mama's boy who, when his mother would give him these instructions, he would basically just do it. And he didn't seem to really consider the long-term ramifications in terms of how his actions would affect his brother. Well, here we go. He's leaving home now, running away. His brother's threatened to kill him. He comes to this place called Bethel. Bethel means house of bread or place of provision. And he lies his head on a rock. And as he lays his head on this rock, he sort of has a, a vision or a dream. In this dream, God speaks to him and gives him a declaration. This declaration makes certain commitments to Jacob. A part of the declaration, God says, I'm going to lead you home again safely. He says, I'm going to give you food and clothing. He says, I'm going to protect your family. I'm going to make your name and your family great. God makes all of these promises to Jacob. In the middle of this dream, Jacob wakes up, and all of a sudden, it's as if he comes to himself he has an awareness, an, an epiphany. And, and that moment he says, surely the Lord is in this place and I didn't know it. 
In other words, he was saying not that God is in the place of Bethel, that physical place where he was, not just that, but what he was realizing was that God was in the place of of his physical person. So when he said, surely the Lord is in this place, he was understanding that God is inside of him. He says, up until now, I didn't even know that God was in here. And so at that moment, Jacob makes a commitment. He says, Lord, if you're going to do all of the things that you just promised, if you're going to bring me home safely, if you're going to give me clothes, if you're going to give me food, if you're going to make my name great, if you're going to make, if you're going to do all of the things that you just committed to me, I am going to tithe. He says, surely I'm going to give you a tenth of everything that I have. So in that moment, we realize that Jacob's response to his commitment and his newfound awareness of who God was and where God was, his reaction was to tithe. Now, let's look at another example in the life of Jacob that sort of reflects or bounces off that understanding of God not only being here, but God being here and here. Remember, tithing is not about God getting access to your money. What God is endeavoring to do through your cash flow is he is trying to get a connection with your heart and your mind so that he can begin to speak to you, commune with you, have a relationship, and he can cultivate that relationship with you. So he has this awareness. Look into the life of Jacob a little, uh, fast forward a few years He's been with his uncle uh, Laban a number of years now. His uncle has done a lot of things. He's stolen from him multiple times. Jacob gets to a point where he's frustrated. He says, look, Laban, you've stolen my, from me all of this time. You've taken things that you, you give me things and you take them back. You give me things, you take them back. He says, look, I'm getting out of here. And Laban goes, no, no, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. You know, we've been really blessed since you've been here. So here's what I want to do. So in that moment, Jacob makes another agreement with Laban. He says, look, you take the animals that look like this. You can take the ones that have, that have the, you know, that are solid colored or striped. I don't remember exactly which one. But he says, you take the animals that look like this, and I'm going to take the animals that look like this. And what Jacob had done was initially given himself the smaller number. He had given Laban, Laban the larger population of animals. I mean, it was a cattle. And, and so he says, you, I'm going to take this lesser population. And he gets an idea. He takes reeds and puts them in front of the animals where they drink so that every time the animals would come to this spot to drink, they would see the reeds. And all of a sudden, the animals started to have young that looked you know, like the reeds that had, I think it was speckled and spotted. Now here's a question for you. Remember we said that tithing was God's goal. His goal was to gain access to our mind and our heart so that he could commune with us and he could fellowship with us. He could show us things. Think about Jacob. Where did the idea to place those reeds in the spot where the animals drink, where do you think that came from? You see, tithing is a response. It's a response to a newfound awareness that of not only who God is, but where God is. And it's understanding that not only is God here, but he is in here and he wants to have a relationship with me so that he can gain access to my mind by way of my heart. And the, use, the, the tool that he uses to gain access to my heart and my mind is my money. So that's the first component from accessing the windows of heaven. The first lesson that this book teaches is that tithing is not about your money. It is about God endeavoring to reach into your life and you all of a sudden becoming aware that God wants a deeper relationship with you. It's a newfound awareness that God wants to connect with you and your response to that awareness is to tithe. Now, why is this essential? Because in Matthew 6, 21, it says, where your treasures, your wealth, your money, where your treasures are, 
that's where your heart is going to be also. And so Jacob realized that by putting his treasures, by putting a portion, that 10% of his income where God was, it caused his heart to follow. That is the first segment on accessing the windows of heaven. We hope you'll join us for segment number two.